So today we're going to walk through the steps to find the expected value of the exponential distribution. In green, we have the definition for an expected value if it's a continuous distribution. And in orange, we have our exponential PDF, which we're going to plug in to our definition for the expected value, which gives us our final equation. Now we can walk through this equation and get a final answer for our expected value. So the first step in this integral is to clean up the function, and this can be done by moving any constants to the outside of the integral. In this case, that's going to be 1 over lambda. Since we have two values of x in our integral, we're going to have to use integration by parts to solve this problem. Pulling straight from our equation above, we can plug in x for u and e to the negative x over lambda for dv. Now, doing simple derivatives, we can find du as the derivative of x and v as the integral of e to the negative x over lambda. Now on the bottom we have our new integral and within the brackets we have our equation that's rewritten in the form of the u dv integration and the 1 over lambda is carried over from the beginning so it applies to the entire function. Also this symbol here means that we're going to have to plug in at infinity and subtract that from zero. But we're not going to worry about that for now because we're going to get all of the calculus out of the way first and then worry about plugging in everything for simplification. Our new integral is looking kind of messy so the first thing we can do is get rid of that one and move the lambda to the outside. So the integral of e raised to some values is going to be that original function divided by the derivative of whatever e is raised to. So in this case, our integral is going to be lambda, which is coming from the outside, times e to the negative x over lambda, divided by the derivative of negative x over lambda, which is negative 1 over lambda. Then we can simplify this by flipping that negative 1 over lambda and getting our next equation line. Now that we've finished all steps of integration, I'm able to move that summation from 0 to infinity to the outside of the brackets. Now all that's left is to complete this summation and simplify, and then we have our final answer. So now we've finished our setup, we've finished all of our integrations, and all that's left is to do our summations at infinity and 0. Plugging infinity into x, we get infinity times e to the negative infinity over lambda minus lambda squared e to the negative infinity over lambda. What's important to note here is that we're making the assumption that infinity divided by e to the infinity over lambda is going to equal 0 as we go to infinity. So what this means is that infinity is less than e to the infinity over lambda. And the same assumption holds for the second part, where lambda squared over e to the negative infinity over lambda should equal 0. So for this part, we just get 0. Now, when plugging 0 into our main equation, we're going to see that we're plugging 0 directly in for x. So our first segment is going to be equal to 0. And for our second part, we're going to have lambda squared times e to the negative 0. And anything raised to 0 is equal to 1, so our second part is equal to lambda squared. And then we get 1 over lambda times negative lambda squared equals negative lambda. All that's left now is to plug in our value we got for infinity, which is 0, and subtract that from our value that we got at 0, which is negative lambda which makes our final answer 0 minus negative lambda equals lambda.